Joining me now for more on this is Australian Strategic Policy Institute Senior Analyst, Dr Malcolm Davis. Dr Malcolm Davis, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, Taiwan's result is a, is a win for democracy, more or less, but China has warned any new independence moves would be harshly punished. What will we see from China and Xi Jinping now? Look, I think what you will see from Beijing is a decision to ramp up uh, coercion against Taiwan. Uh, the last thing that uh, Beijing wanted was the DPP to win, and that's exactly what has happened. Uh, so China will now attempt to use military coercion, economic coercion, political coercion to try and intimidate the Chinese people, uh, the, the Taiwanese people, sorry, uh, into accepting what is known as the 1992 consensus. Uh, which is Beijing's terms uh, for the imposition of unification on Taiwan. And I think that that, you know, that coercion will fail uh, because the Taiwanese people, the vast majority of them, uh, do not want unification with a, a Chinese Communist Party-controlled China. They've looked at what happened in Xinjiang, in Tibet and Hong Kong, and they do not want to be part of that future. I mean, Australia has previously been threatened that basically if we didn't distance ourselves from Taiwan, we'd be virtually pushed out by China. Australia faces a very difficult balance at the moment of improving ties with Taiwan's new government, but also stabilising those relations with China. How should Anthony Albanese approach this? Look, I think the, the message from the Chinese ambassador to Australia the other day about pushing Australia into the abyss if we... Uh, seek to maintain our relationship with Taiwan, should send uh, a message to uh, Prime Minister Albanese that China doesn't really take efforts by the Australian government to stabilise the relationship seriously. And under the surface, the wolf warriors are uh, fighting to get out. Uh, I think that's you know, what you have seen from China, from the Chinese ambassador to Australia, is a threat to Australia. Basically, that if you don't know your place, if you don't toe our line, uh, the consequences will be uh, forced upon you. I think what Prime Minister Albanese and the Albanese government needs to do is push back hard against that. Uh, the first thing that Prime Minister Albanese should do is engage uh, with uh, President uh, Lai, uh, the new uh, Taiwanese um, president, and seek to deepen the relationship with Taiwan uh, including talking about a free trade area agreement. Uh, that Taiwan has been pushing for this for some time. I think it's well past time that Taiwan and Australia had a free trade agreement. They certainly... Uh, Australian government should certainly not kowtow to Chinese intimidation. Mm. You mentioned there are a few things that Anthony Albanese should do, but if he doesn't, is that dangerous for Australia? I think if he... Uh, adopts a cautious approach to this uh, and if he basically is seen to be hesitant in the face of Chinese intimidation and Chinese threats, that will only encourage China, uh, the Chinese Communist Party, to push harder. Uh, and there are other things that the Chinese Communist Party is, is trying to challenge us on, including things like AUKUS, for example, uh, including our stance on the South China Sea, uh, China wants to become a member of mm. the CPTPP, but it wants Taiwan not to be a member. I think Taiwan should be a member as a vibrant liberal democracy with a strong market economy. I do not think China should be a member of the CPTPP. So there will be pressure on Australia uh, in coming uh, weeks and months to uh, know their place from Beijing's perspective and to essentially accept China's uh, preferred line on things. And I think uh, the Albanese government needs to push back hard against that or be at the risk of uh, suffering further intimidation in the future.